Hello, everybody. This is Chuck Carnavale, co-founder of FastGraphs, the Fundamentals Analyzer software tool. And, you know, one of the questions I get quite often is, is uh, people ask me what I think about dividend reinvesting. Should I, you know, reinvest the dividends? Should I participate in the DRIP program? Or would you rather collect and invest on your own? And, you know, that's a question that really depends on the individual investor. But what it really brings up is I want to talk a little bit about dividend reinvesting, what it is, how it works, and some of the nuances because dividend reinvesting is actually can be very relevant to the yield, first of all, that the dividend company invests or a dividend growth stock is paying to the growth rate of that company, whether it's a high yield, a low yield, or you know even a moderate yielding stock, all are factors that you want to take into consideration when you're considering dividend reinvesting. So let's take a look at dividend reinvesting from all these different angles here. But before I do, I want to talk about what it really boils down to. I consider dividend reinvesting a soft form of what they call dollar cost averaging, the investment philosophy or strategy called dollar cost averaging. And dollar cost averaging is very straightforward. It's a concept where it was designed for people to invest, you know, in the accumulation phase of their lives, like $100 a month or $500 a month, or whatever they could afford into something like a mutual fund or even an individual stock. And by being religious, being religious and methodical by investing that same amount of money every month or every you know period into the same stock, they were taking advantage of turning their money into into a smart investor. And what that means is if their $100 investment was made during a time when the investment was very expensive, overvalued, if you will, their money would get defensive and they'd buy fewer shares. In contrast, if we had a market crash and their stock was very, very cheap and that $100 investment they made would, would be very aggressive, it would accumulate more of the inexpensive stock and vice versa. So dollar cost averaging was kind of a smart way to end up getting the average, if you will, of what the market did over a long period of time or what the investment itself did over a long period of time. And it's a very good concept. Now, when you're dividend reinvesting, it's a soft form of that because, for example, if you invested $10,000 into an investment and say it's only yielding you know, less than a half a percent, let's say, you're only investing less than $50 you know, every, well, it's actually $12, $12.5 every quarter, you know, $50 a year into that same stock. So it's not going to have the impact of investing a larger sum of money. So let's look at some different examples here of dollar cost averaging and how it, how it works with different types of investment. I'm going to start out here by looking at the dividend aristocrat Roper Technologies. And Roper Technologies is a very fast growing company company. Earnings growth is averaged over 14% a year. The dividend yield is 0.56%. So that's a very low yielding stock. And you can see the white line, as those of you who know the graphing tool, this is the dividends that the company pays. Very consistent. But notice that their payout ratio, this portion below the white line, shows what portion of these total earnings that the company's paying out. And if I look at that from a standpoint of their performance, you can see that their dividend payout ratio has been you know, 15-ish, 10-ish percent, 12 percent. You know, it's a very, very low dividend payer. And, you know, if you invested $10,000 in this stock on December 29th, 2000, you'd have bought just under 605 shares. Notice your share count stays the same this whole time frame. The company did grow their dividends by 14.9 percent on average, 14.7 compound average. So you originally invested, you know, in this case, $100 your first year, $93 your first year, $100 by your second year. And, you know, the last year you'd have had 12, you'd have received $1,270. Your growth yield, I call it, or yield on cost would have gone from, you know, around 1% up to about 12.7% last year. Your $10,000 investment collecting the dividends and spending them or just or just even just you know gathering them up you'd have got eight thousand seven hundred and eighty dollars in dividends your portfolio your ten thousand dollar investment would have grown to two hundred and forty three thousand nine hundred and eighty eight that's a seventeen point one percent annualized rate of return without dividends add in the eighty seven hundred of dividends and you had two hundred and fifty two thousand dollars or a seventeen point three percent annualized rate of return. In this case, you got significantly more income than the market, as well as significantly greater capital appreciation and a much greater total return. Now, 
in contrast, if you'd have taken this same company and reinvested the dividends, and here I'm choosing the calculation on FastGraph. For those of you who are FastGraph subscribers, if you go into additional saying, we've always had this feature. A lot of people keep asking me to add it. We have it. Okay. All you got to do is check this little box that says dividend reinvesting here. And then you know, the, the tool will automatically reinvest your dividends at the end of every quarter. And so, you know, you can see here that your share count would have went from 604.9 shares to 609.6, picked up approximately five shares, and your share count grew actually to 686 shares. You picked up, you know, barely um, 80 shares, just slightly over 80 shares of stock over this time frame. Your income yield went from an 8,000 range to 9,650, and your 10,000 was now worth with the dividends reinvested, you know, growth in dividends, $276,698 or 17.8%. That's in contrast to 17.3%. Also want you to notice the S&P, what happened to the S&P. You know, the S&P would have given you 6.67%, excuse me, without reinvesting the dividends, 7.9%. So reinvesting dividends have an impact, but they don't necessarily have the impact that many people think they do when you're dealing with a low yielding investment like Roper Technologies. Now, let me move up the food chain a little bit here and look at Church and Dwight, another dividend to risk credit. Only now we've got a dividend yield of 1.61%. Once again, we see a company that had a very low payout ratio in the early years of this graph going back into 2001, you know, up through the Great Recession. And then you can see that their payout ratio increased dramatically as they started paying out a larger portion of their earnings and dividends. So when I look at their performance, you know, a ten thousand dollar investment would have, you know, the price was three seventy one, would have bought two thousand six hundred ninety six point six five shares, and those that share count once again stays the same. The ten thousand dollars in dividends would have, you'd have got one hundred and thirty dollars in dividends after your first year. Last year you'd have got two thousand five hundred eighty eight. Your ten thousand dollar investment would have thrown off twenty thousand six hundred six dollars in dividends, but your ten thousand would have grown to two hundred thirty five thousand. That's a seventeen point four percent annualized rate of return, turning ten thousand into two hundred fifty six thousand by adding your dividends that you did not reinvest into your annualized rate of return. Again, without dividends being reinvested, you got seventeen point four percent reinvest the dividends in this stock and your your share count went from 2,696 shares to 3,414 shares. Now you'd have got 24,000 in dividends. Your 10,000 was now worth 298,000. That's an 18.2% rate of return in contrast to 17.4. Very nice increase, but still not as impactful as, you know, some people I think think that dividend reinvesting actually is. On the other hand, the impact of dividend reinvesting can be much more powerful if you're looking at a higher yielding stock. So here we've got Omega Healthcare Investors, a real estate investment trust, only grew by less than 2% a year, but it's throwing off a dividend yield of 7.3%. Notice this big surge in payout ratio after the first year. We've had a very consistent dividend growth streak here, as you can see, but it's, the difference is we've got a high yield investment. So if we invested $10,000 in Omega Healthcare back in December 29th of 2000, we'd have bought 2,666.67 shares. Again, the share count stays the same. This would have thrown off because of the high yield that it ended up throwing off over 79,000 in dividend income over this period. 10,000 would have grown to 96,680. That's a total of 176,853, a 15.2% annualized rate of return. Once again, without reinvesting dividends. But the point is, this is a much higher yielding stock. So what would have happened had you reinvested the dividends? Well, in this case, your share count went from 2,666 shares to 8,895 shares. Your yield on cost went from 4% up to 231%. Your 10,000 would have thrown off $171,953 in dividends. And your total return would have been 10,000 would have grown to 325,837. That's an 18.8% .8 
annualized rate of return in contrast to a 15.2%. And again, a rhetorical question, would you rather have 176,000 at the end of this time frame or 325,000? So obviously reinvesting dividends in a high yielding investment has much more impact than it does investing in the lower yielding investments I've looked at so far. Now, but just because an investment has high yield doesn't automatically mean that you're going to get you know, a much bigger benefit out of reinvesting your dividends. You, you're still going to get a benefit, but the benefit's going to be, can look a little differently. And let me show you what I mean by looking at a mortgage REIT here. This is Annaly Capital Management, one of the largest mortgage REITs in the country and one of the more famous or most popular. And, you know, what I want you to understand is the nature of the beast here. This company obviously deals in mortgages. It currently has a 10.23% yield. So we've really ratcheted up the yield curve, if you will, here. But notice what's happened to the company's operating profits. Earnings have fallen from a high of like 276 all the way down to a dollar and 10 cents last year, all the way down to a dollar in 2019, and expected to be around a dollar five, dollar six, dollar seven over the next couple of years. But also look at their dividend. It went from a high of 265 in 2010 down to 88 cents, you know, expected for this fiscal year, 91 cents that they paid last year. So if you look at it from a performance point of view, even though it's yielding 10%, your original investment would have bought 550 shares. Once again, the share count stays the same. You would have received a little over 100% of your money back, but look what happened to your capital. Your 10000 would have shrunk to $4,730 or a negative 5.5% rate of return. Even adding dividends, you ended up with a 3.8% total return with a significant hit on your principal. Now, had you taken and reinvested those dividends, and let me shorten this time frame here so I'm comparing apples to apples, your $10,000 investment now would have thrown off $26,602 in dividends. But look how interesting this is. Even then, because of your, the hit on your principal, your total return was actually lower than your dividend return. You ended up with a net of 24,251 or 6.9%. That's in contrast to the 3.8% you made without reinvesting your dividends. So reinvesting your dividends even helped in this, you know, what I call sucker yielding type mortgage rate. But the bottom line is the, the impact of dividend reinvesting is going to vary according to how much money that, you know, how much dividend yield the company you're investing in is offering at the time you invest in it. Additionally, in this example, keep in mind, look at what's happening as your, your dividends did drop but your yield stayed the same, but so did your earnings drop and so did your price drop. Notice that your price dropped here as well. So when you're looking at performance, you ended up accumulating quite a few shares, you know, when the stock was cheap and, you know, when it was inexpensive. I don't know if it was actually cheap, but when it was actually on, you know, lower than when you originally started. So that's where your money was being smart, but was it being smart? Because you were buying more shares than of a decreasing asset, you know, so I don't know how smart you know, that means your money really was in that example. With my last example, let's go ahead and look at a master limited partnership, the MLP Enterprise Product Partners. Now, I've been, you know, was kind of uh, challenged by one of our subscribers here. You know, this is an MLP and it does have a K-1. And, and these are not really dividends. These are distributions. And a portion of those distributions will be considered return to capital. And the other portion will be income. And you do get a K-1. But typically, this doesn't bother you tax-wise because you've got unrelated business tax income numbers that most you know, what I call average everyday investors never exceed. But in this case, we've got an investment that grew at 4.7%. It's throwing off an 8.17% dividend yield, but it's got a very consistent record of increasing its dividend year after year. So if I look at it from a performance standpoint, had I put $10,000 again on December 29th, 2000, I'd have started out with a 7.4% yield on cost after my first year, that would have grown to 22%. Over this time frame, my $10,000 investment would have thrown off $30,433 in dividends. My growth, my capital would have gone from 10000 to 28000 I actually made more money off dividends than I did capital here, even without reinvesting them, I might add. But my total return was 9.1%, you know, including dividend income over this total period of time. 
if I reinvested my dividends, however, over this time frame, that $10,000 investment I made in 2000 would have thrown off $67,000 in dividends and my total return would have been 98,000. But once again, because I had such a high yield and I was reinvesting the dividends, I got significantly more benefit from the dividend here than I did the capital appreciation, which was just the opposite we saw with the um, lower yielding, faster growing stocks that I showed before. Anyway, this is Chuck Carnival. You know, I hope I've given you some insights into the nuances of dividend, you know, reinvesting. There's a lot of factors that are going to affect just how valuable that is to you as an investor. The yield of the company, the growth rate of the company, how fast the dividend's growing, what the dividend payout ratio of the stock is. So there's a lot of nuances that I just wanted you all to be aware of, and I hope I helped you do that by going through this video here. I've enjoyed doing it. I wish everybody a happy Easter coming up. If you like this video, give me a like, ring the bell. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. Um, tell your friends about it. And everybody have a great Easter coming up. This has been Chuck Carnival saying thanks for watching.